Hey everybody, it's Greg here. Uh, just got another video for you. So we have a, a Frigidaire fridge. Um, I'm not, it's not necessarily, um, you know, anything wrong with it. I just wanted to kind of go over a bunch of points that uh, break down on, on these exact fridges. So I will take you a little closer and we'll get to taking it apart. Okay, so first thing we need to do is go up into the freezer section here and take this shelf out. So you just want to kind of push it, push it. It's usually to the, to the left, but push it so it'll collapse into those holes and you can take out the right side. Throw that up there. Then what we're going to do is okay so this back panel i want to take that off and, and show you a bunch of stuff inside of there um, if your fridge is badly frosting up you can see all the frost building up especially around these vents um, or the fan is making a funny sound because it's starting to hit all that that frost and ice that's building up in there i'll show you um, one of the biggest uh, reasons why. Okay, so this cover right here, it's got a little little tab in there you gotta push in. Um, this is what covers the ice maker, ice maker wiring and, and uh, tube right up here. So got that out of the way. And then we just got two quarter inch screws in the back here. Drill's not wanting to work too well today. So take those out. Now you'll have to unclip the unclip the, the wire from the panel back here. So all you have to do is push in the, the little tabs and push it back. There's also a ground wire on there that you can get it out of the way now, really. You just pry it over. And that's it. This guy comes forward. Now, it's still connected electrically um, to the fan. So you're going to have to reach back here and uh, unplug that fan before you can take out this whole guy. So we'll get that out of the way for a minute here. Okay, so I brought you guys in a little closer here, but right here on this tube is um, your defrost thermostat. So when it detects that basically this tube up here has gotten too cold, it will signal to the timer that uh, it needs to turn on to defrost. So for defrost, I don't know if you can see it that gray or not, but the wire, the defrost heater is right here, and it runs underneath. Now I'm trying to get you better. So yeah, it runs all underneath here, and then back up this side. It's just a U shape. And then the wiring comes up right there, that black wire there. So if you, if these coils here are heavily frosted, which they, they should have some frost on them, but not, you know, not a lot of ice and things like that. Um, definitely check um, that thermostat. That's one of the first guys to check. The other one is the heater, and you can just put your meter leads right onto the actual heater and, and test for resistance. Um, <clears throat> that's about all for for the defrost system in here, anyway. Um, if the fan is not working, so the connector that actually goes to the fan is this guy here. Let me get you a better shot of that. 
Okay, so this is the wire here. Now, the fan, when the fan connects to this, it actually only uses the two outer. So this red and this blue, I don't know why the heck they run a ground to it when it doesn't use it. But, so if your fan is not running, um, you can also check right at this plug, uh, check for voltage at the, the bottom one here and the top guy here. And if you have voltage there, then you're gonna to need to be checking your fan. So I'll grab that. Okay, so this is the fan here. So if you see any um, ice buildup happening uh, anywhere near these blades, you can spin these blades and, and see if you know there's actually anything anything hitting them. You'll definitely have to remove this this assembly. Maybe run it under hot water to get that ice out of there. Um, testing the actual fan, you can just test resistance on those two wires and that'll tell you whether your, your motor for your fan is good or not. It's, it's fairly simple with these guys, which is nice. Okay, so one more thing you can check actually in the freezer here is that, that hole you're looking at right there. Um, so what can happen is ice can build up across um, this hole here. So if you seem to be getting um, cold air inside the freezer, um, you open the freezer and you can hear the fan running, but when you put your hand over the, the intersecting hole inside the fridge section and you're not getting any airflow into there, this could be just plugged off. So you want to check that when you're in here too. Um, the defrost, when it runs, all the water runs down um, this hole in the back here. So when you're when you're in here, you might as well just check to make sure that that's not all all plugged up with ice, because it can. These fridges don't usually do that. Other fridges are more prone to that, but it can happen. So I'll put this panel back on, and then we'll take a look inside the fridge section. Okay, so. This is the other, well really, the other part that can be a problem. If you're having too much ice build up inside the freezer, um, these are the vent holes that come down from the freezer. If you're not getting any you know, airflow through there, you can also pull down this whole assembly. Um, it's, it's fairly simple to pull down, so maybe I'll just do that. Um, one thing I'll show you, it's kind of easier to do it while it's still up there. But this thing actually still has a, an old style um, defrost timer that you can advance with a flat blade screwdriver. So what you do is you just go up in this section. Maybe I'll try to take you guys right in there. Just give me a sec. So oh, well, you can see that in, sitting inside of there. Um, so yeah, you just put your flat blade screwdriver up in this hole and start turning it. Sometimes you need to wiggle a little bit, but you'll start to hear this sound. Once you start hearing that, you're, you're, what you're doing is advancing through the run um, time on this guy. So. They don't give you much to actually grab on there, but you advance it until you hear a click. So, there, that was a click. So when you hear that click, the, the fridge, this is the way to force it into defrost. So at this point, you could open the freezer section and, well, if you still had that back wall off, um, you'd be able to see that that heater glow. But even with that that panel on, um, you'll start to hear the water hitting the heater, and then you know that um, the heater is turning on. So you know that your your defrost thermostat is good because it's allow, allowing power to go through it, and you know your heater's good because it's turning on. So 
if those both come on, then this guy is the, the actual problem. So you just replace him and uh, you'll be back in business with defrosting. So I'm going to get this guy down. It's just a couple of Phillips uh, screws and we'll drop it down and take a better look inside of it. Okay, so to undo this guy, just squeeze these little tabs and pull that down. So the, I've already undid the, the screws um, for the timer, but this is essentially it. Um, the, the part that I was turning with the screwdriver is that that little part right there and it's got little little ridges on it that your screwdriver can grab onto to advance that cycle um, that's why they come off the screwdriver comes off there fairly easily because there's not not really a big ridge there um, so let me turn this around the other guy that's in here is your cold control. So that's the part that's actually connected right to your knob for the temperature settings. Um, so say if the, the fridge wasn't wasn't cold enough or whatever, there's, there's a tube running out of here. It looks like a wire, but, and it runs all the way back to where um, this vent pieces. Now, what it does is it measures the temperature. So it wants there to be, um, you know, as much cold as, as, as needed in the fridge section and as much cold as needed in the freezer section. Um, since all the cold is actually made in the freezer section and there's just a fan bringing it down from there into the fridge, it will run that uh, compressor a longer time just to get more cold air into that fridge section. So that's basically what that guy's controlling. Um, anyway, I'll put this timer back on. Okay, so when you put this, this whole assembly back up, there's a little tube piece here. Now that tube piece needs to fit into this hole in the back. And what you can find sometimes is crap will build up inside of here and it's not draining out of the out of the freezer section that defrost water so it'll collect in this little part here and then it'll start to overflow um, so if you're getting that issue of water dripping into the fridge section also check here just to see that that's not all built up with crap in there so I'll throw this back up there Okay, so we're here at the back of the fridge. Um, just have a couple quarter inch um, screws to take out. And you can see the, the fuzz that is built up on this guy. That's not great. That's, these are the channels for bringing air in to cool down the compressor. Okay, so what we have here is these are your condenser coils. So this is where um, all the heat is gets it gets rid of all the heat basically that it sucks out of the fridge. Um, so you want to make sure that this guy is cleaned. I would clean it probably. Well, depends whether you go to animals or not, but I'd say at least once a year um, clean that that off it's tough to fit a vacuum into if you've got a little thin attachment you can fit it in between these blades um, but it's yeah it needs to be cleaned so over here we have a fan and if the fridge or freezer doesn't seem cold enough um, or if things seem really hot from the back 
uh, what you're going to want to do is check this guy. Make sure he's actually spinning. Um, the electrical connectors are right here. It's very easy to, to test it if it's not spinning for power coming in. If you have power coming in, then you can test for resistance through the motor. Um, what I noticed, this guy has a piercing valve already on it. So somebody has tapped into this system before and either refilled it or you know did something like that but so that's probably why this fridge is having issues but um so this is your compressor um let's see if i can get a better shot of that so that's where the electrical connects to your compressor so that over uh, here over there so there's a little clip right here so you just pull that clip off easier said than done sometimes should just pull over and up but some of them are, are really tight I don't, I don't know why they are okay if that doesn't work <laughs> a screwdriver and just pry it up okay so this guy will just come right off so if you have problems with you know the compressor won't fire up or, or something like that you can come right down here and see those three pins poking out there right there and there and there so you can test for resistance between this pin and this pin, this pin and that pin, and then this pin and that pin. So you should have resistance reading between all of them. Now, two of the sums will add up to the total of one of the third. So say, usually you get about four, four ohms on, on this side, say six ohms on this side, and then between these bottom two, you'll get 10. And those are the kind of numbers that you want to see from that. Um, if you don't, and you're getting some weird number, um, more than likely electrically, the compressor is toast. What you can also do is check from each of these pins to um, you know anywhere on the case. Just scrape a little bit of that paint off the off the case. Make sure you're touching you know, actual metal. But you want to see whether the internal electrical of the compressor is shorted to its case because that can be a problem too. So this guy is just a relay. So let me take that off and I'll pull it out. Okay, so coming into this relay, um, what you can do is where that plug connects right to there you can check that wire and that's that blue and red wire right there you can test to make sure that power is coming down to your compressor if your compressor is not running or um, but what you might also have to do is a fridge will go into defrost usually every eight hours so what you can do is try to advance it like i showed you earlier um, if it's just clicking and clicking and clicking and it gets to a certain point where it makes that loud click then you know that you were actually in um, a normal run cycle so advance it a little bit more so it goes out of that out of that defrost zone and then you know you should have um, power going to this guy so yeah power goes right into there Okay, so if you check for power um, coming into this guy, so that's that red and blue wire over here, and you have power coming into it, and you've checked your compressor electrically and the compressor tests okay, um, this really is probably bad. Sometimes you can shake it and it'll make a, a rattling sound and then you know it is shot, but uh, the compressor can be mechanically seized also and not able to run 
there's no way to diagnose that really besides testing everything electrically if everything tests electrically fine then you don't really have much of a choice left at that point um, it's a compressor change which is usually fairly expensive but uh, I guess it depends how expensive the fridge is <laughs> on whether you do it or not and the, the age of the fridge. So that's just about it for this whole fridge. Um, I'm going to put this back together and then I will um, talk to you guys again in a sec here. Okay, so that's, uh, that's just about everything that can go wrong in a fridge. A lot, there's a lot of different fridges that have different... Uh, different insides and stuff. A lot of the, the timers are now boards instead of an actual mechanical timer, which is a little tougher to test, but um, yeah, that's that's the general um, diagnostic of, of pretty much everything in, a, in an older style fridge, I guess. So if you guys like this video, um, hit that subscribe button and uh, please leave a comment. Let me know, um, first of all, if you guys you know like what I'm doing here, but um, you know anything that that you you want to me to fix i guess you want to be seen on this channel um let me know because it's I'm, I'm just what opened everything so um yeah thanks for watching guys and uh I'll catch you in the next one thanks bye